hello lovelies welcome back to my channel welcome if this is your first time of stopping by hi you are highly welcome please consider subscribing to my channel join the growing family to the, my own subscribers i said thank you you guys know i really appreciate you thank you very much for all your support so i apologize for not posting video that like i used to post um before um this period it, i've been so busy and i promise to be posting like i used to be to to do so without wasting time let's get into the video and i will see you at the end of the video so for this video for this time we'll be making use of our paper for the marking because of the um off shoulder effect on it and for this time i will start by marking out my shoulder by marking a line for my shoulder as my shoulder line and the next line i'm going to mark is for my zipper allowance and um, for one inch zipper allowance because we are cutting the back and the front together so i'm going to decide to mark this for zipper and remember our measurement is going to start from the center front that's the first line then that's where our measurement is going to start and from there i'm going to mark my shoulder measurement which is 12 inches divided by two and then i'm going to add one in or half inch allowance for the joining of this sleeve and i'm going to go ahead and make a line then then i'm going to go down go down by six inches from my armhole depth and then i'm going to go ahead and connect the line And the next thing I'm going to do is to take one inch down for my shoulder slope. And then for my neckline, I'm going to be marking 3 inches for the length and then 2.5 inches for the width. Then I'm going to make a, a curve to give it a round curve, a round curve. <laughs> then I'm going to connect my shoulder slope to the neckline to meet the shoulder line. Then the next thing I'm going to do, start doing is to put insert my circumference measurement and for my half length I have before that i'm going to mark my half length which is 11 inches plus one inch allowance for joining then i'm going to go ahead and insert my bust measurement remember it's going to start from the center line and my bust measurement is divided by four plus two inches allowance for joining that's what i'm going to, i i mark there and i'm going to make a curve for my armhole then i'm going to go ahead and insert my waist measurement as well plus two inches allowance you can add less inches or you can add more so depending on how you you prefer your allowance but i prefer to have more instead of having less fabric i can trim this off anytime i am done with the station then for my back neckline i went down by 1.5 inches and the width is the same with the with the front and i'm going to go ahead and then make a curve to connect this so for the off shoulder i'm going to go from here i'm going to go down by um, about four inches from the shoulder line i went down by three inches then from the from my armhole line i'm going to come up by two inches then from there i'm going to now make a curve like a curve it to get something like a sweetheart net neck i'm going to go ahead and then of my neckline well
and that's all for the cutting of this the bodies and i hope you're enjoying this video please don't forget to give me a thumbs up as usual share my videos to family and friends as well and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do not leave today without subscribing so i'm going to transfer this i'm going to cut out the back bodies first before trimming out out um, the yoke and the and then cut out the front bodies and remember the center front is going to be at your folded folded area of the fabric that's why i flipped the um paper in to the other side so i'm going to go ahead and trim off the zipper allowance and then the back neckline the front neckline so i'm going to get the front pattern for this and then also cut out my yoke then remember like i said before the center front is going to be at the center of the fabric you don't want to cut your fabric and um, your your bodies and you notice that the center is open so you are going to flip this over and then place it at the center and for the, sh um, the yoke area you are going to add half inch where I am pointing now so you have allowance for you to join the, the yoke and then the damp pieces then I am going to go ahead and cut it out Then I'm going to go ahead and cut my sleeve and my fabric is folded into four because I'm cutting the the two um the two sleeves together. So I'm just making sure that whatever I have is enough for uh, my my sleeve and then some inches extra inches for because it's a balloon sleeve. And I went ahead to mark my sleeve length plus two inches allowance for joining. I went down by three inches for my cap side and then i'm going to make something like s from to to connect this if you, but if you, if you have a your french curve you can use it to make this curve and that's it for my sleeve nothing much because this is a balloon sleeve it's not a fitted one then for my yoke i went ahead to place my yoke and then pin it down remember you're going to add half inch for you to be able to join it to the down piece of this body and that's the only allowance that, that you're going to add every other thing is the same and while doing this you're going to turn this that the center front will be at the folded area i made a mistake here so around my neckline will be at the folded area but because so that when you cut it out that place is not going to be open so i cut this into two i'm going to be using one to turn in one so i'm going to go ahead and stitch around the neckline to be able to turn it inside out and this is it after stitching it down i'm not going to notch this because i don't want the excess fabric to be showing so i'm going to cut it out as close to so i'm going to go ahead and cut this as close to the trade as possible but do not cut through the trade so that is going to give it the effect of that um, notion then after cutting it i'm going to go ahead and then iron this down i'm sorry for all the noise we are on holiday then the next thing i'm going to do is to attach this to the bodies if your fabric is if it's going to show your fabric inside what you're going to do is to just match your bridal satin to your to your lace if you're using this and then use your lining to turn this I have a video of how I did it in my ball gown. I will link it in the description box for you to check that out. But because my neckline is not showing, that's the area at the off shoulder is not showing. That's why I'm not using my lining. So I'm going to go ahead and then notch the center and then match it at the center of the body, making sure I arrange my my fabrics well. Then I'm going to go ahead and then place my lace on this. So by the time I stitch it down, I'm going to turn it to the other side. Side. Remember, is the you are going to place it. Um, the the bridal satin is going to be the back, and then the facing the front of the lace. By the time you turn it, it will be the fr front of the lace outside, and then facing the shining part of the bridal. I hope you enjoy, um, understand. Just use your pin to do it, do it, and then. Make sure that you are getting it right before you stitch. And also for the back one, I'm going to do the same thing. I think I made a mistake while doing this. 
um, is when I wanted to stitch it down that I noticed that I didn't place it well. So after stitching it down, I'm going to go ahead and then notch the necklines for this before turning it inside out. And this is it after i was done stitching the necklines out um i decided to go ahead and then top stitch the neckline to keep it in place it was moving so much and for the fact that we don't have light for now so i'm going to go ahead and top stitch the neckline and also the front um neckline not the neckline the that the, just where i'm just showing you guys so this is it after i was done stop stitching it is in place now looking better <laughs> than before so i'm going to go ahead and use my pin to keep all these pieces in place i don't want them to keep moving around when i'm working with it you can as well stitch it stitch it down with your fabric for to reduce um the the length of of you making this style i just use my needle to keep all this in place So after stop, um, holding it in place, I'm going to go ahead and place my two shoulders together and then stitch on my shoulder, pin it down before going to my sewing machine to stitch it down. And this is it after I was done stitching it. If your own is pulling to the front you can then go ahead and top stitch it the in the inside and um, going towards the closed part not going towards the organza part going towards the closed part so what i'm going to do is now is to flip it over arrange this fabric well and then take out my zipper allowance I'm just pinning my zipper, the SS, that's my zipper allowance. I'm just pinning it down so that we can able to we can be able to work on the other remaining fabric fabric pieces. So for my sleeve, I'm going to go ahead and then fold this and stitch it down. Remember, whatever you are going to fold will be able to will, uh, will be able to pass your pin and your elastic. So I'm going to go ahead and then pass this elastic into my into into my into the folded place then stitch one side down then pull it out from the other side and then secure it with my stitches and i'll do the same thing for the other slip and this is it after i was done with it so the next thing i'm going to do is to attach my sleeve to the bodies and for this i'm going to fold it and get the center of my sleeve then pin it at my shoulder line so when i was done stitching down pinning it down i'm going to go ahead and pin from the where the armhole starts pin it up towards the shoulder line towards the shoulder so when i pin it down down to that place i'm going to do the same thing for the other side and you notice that we have excess remember our sleeve has excess when you cut it out so that excess i'm going to plate it at the shoulder line line so this is it after i was done doing this and if it's coming out at the organza side you are going to turn it into the place and then stitch it down the next thing i'm going to do is to stitch the two bodies with my with my um allow with my measurement or with the allowance that i added if you add it to two, two inches you are going to stitch at two inches 
so this is the organizer i'm going to be using for this and you know this um is we have two um layers there so for the short one is is i marked at 11 inches and the, for the first one i marked at 21 inches and this fabric is on fold is on fold so the 21 inches will have about 42 inches and the other one you have about 22 inches so i'm going i went ahead to run a stitch on this i'm going to go ahead and then um cut it And this is it after I was done gathering it. Remember, it's on food. Just look at what I meant. It's on food. Look at it. It's inside. So we're not going to stitch the rough edges of the down part for any reason. So after I was done um, gathering it, what I'm going to do is to get the center of my body and then make a notch there. Then for the the organizers i'm going to also get the um fabric the lining the center there sorry and then pin it down to the center of the body for the two organizers for the two layers and remember you're going to place the the shorter layer first before placing the longer one the longer one is going to be under And then I'm going to go ahead and then place the the long one and then pin the three together. Center, machine the center. Then after pinning it down, you can as well pin from that place to where it fits to your zipper allowance, or you can just go to your sewing machine and arrange while you stitch. And this is it. After I was done stitching it down, we are going to weave the rough edges and afterwards. So for my lining, what I mark, I'm going to mark and then it will be shorter by 2 inches for the organza. I haven't trimmed out that 2 inches which I showed you guys at the beginning of this video. So it's going to be short, 2 inches shorter than the, the, the length of the gown. And what I'm going to do is to also get the center of this and then mash it up to the center of the, of the gown. Then after pinning it down, I'm going to go to my sewing machine to stitch this down with little little place, depending on how big your lining is, your your bridal satin is. Sorry, I'm using my bridal satin. And this is it. After I was done stitching it down, the next thing I'm going to do is to close up the zipper. Okay, to put my trim in, I have this, and I said to make it give it a little bit of um, design to it. So I'm going to go ahead and then stitch this down. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to close it up with my zipper allowance. From my waistline, I marked 5 inches down. Then from there, I'm going to stitch this layer by layer at that 5 inch. The fe Excuse me, the first organza, the second one, and then my bridal satin from 5 inches down. Then I'm going to go, I went ahead to attach my zip and that's all for this tie. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up for um, after watching my videos. And I'll see you in my next video. Share my videos as well. Thank you for watching. Bye.